see what Arnold Schwarzenegger got paid for the film Terminator 2. Nine million dollars. He spoke 700 words. That's thirteen thousand dollars a word. Or one million dollars an IQ point. <laughs> when you think about it, Arnold is Hollywood's perfect action man, isn't he? I mean, fantastic physique, totally devoid of acting ability, <laughs> and a stupid name. <laughs> if only I had a fantastic physique. <laughs> now, Now, whether these facts and figures are true is always difficult to know, but things like that do make for good reading, don't you think? Sex surveys. They're fun, aren't they? There seems to be a new one every week, and I don't know about you, but when I read them, I think, who's getting my share? <laughs> There's been two recently. One claims that 80% of men who had heart attacks while making love were with their mistresses at the time. I'm not surprised. Do you know a Connery if you're sort of halfway through the vinegar strokes and a bloke from Morrie pops up from under the doodah? <laughs> and the other survey claimed that out of all British women tourists who go abroad, one in five makes love to a local man within 24 hours of arrival. He must be having the time of his life. <laughs> That's who's getting my share. <laughs> And the other four women, well, they have to wait till they can get through customs. <laughs> what I find really scary about figures is when they tell you things like you go to sleep every night with about 10 million bed bugs, microscopic things that live in your mattress, and they live on your dead skin. <laughs> they love it when you come back from holiday, you know, two weeks in the sun, and they go, mmm, <laughs> crackling. <laughs> Yeah. You see close-ups of these things in magazines and they look like a cross between a housefly and Oliver Reed. <laughs> By the way, how does Oliver Reed celebrate? <laughs> Here's a few silly facts you might not know. Did you know that last week a Japanese businessman paid £38,000 for a bottle of Gevrey Chambertin 69? That'll teach him to order wine in a British Rail restaurant car. <laughs> And Geoffrey Archer is the only bloke to have joined the Mile High Club on a solo flight. <laughs> I can see people going, what's a Mile High Club? <laughs> and do you know there are over 100,000 hairs on the average human head? <laughs> Someone's getting my share again! Then you get little snippets of information that you should know, but you didn't. Apparently, and this is perfectly true, Kate Bush made an album where she sang along with whales. You, yeah, the whole album she sang along with whales. I, I don't know, it was called Moby Bush or <laughs> Kate Dick or something. I don't know. <laughs> How did they get the whales into the studio? <laughs> Same way they got Pavarotti in, I suppose. <laughs> I bet the recording session was fun. Right, Kate? Uh, look, you're going to have to go on top of Moby. We're a bit short of space here. <laughs> OK, you can get on Moby's back. That's it. Fabulous. But Moby, keep still. Keep, keep still. Oh, Kate. Oh, my God. Kate's got her head stuck down his blowhole. Okay, the man at the back is called Ted Galloway. He runs a bar just outside Malaga. This is his wife, Mary. And this is their villa overlooking the harbour. This is my sister-in-law, sunbathing. <laughs> As you can see, the weather was smashing. <laughs> That's my Uncle Jack on a donkey. <laughs> And this next one 
was taking a lovely little taverna around one of the back streets. <laughs> Hi, Sergeant. Lights. And next year we're going to try Tuscany. <laughs> right, any questions? No, no, sir. Oh, by the way, I've got a little assignment for you two. Oh, good, a chance to cut some crooks. <laughs> a couple of days ago, we picked up Scarface Jack McBride. Hitman, underworld big shot, bank robber. He's a hard man, one of the old school, refusing to name names. Says he won't squeal to a copper. Well, we're going to plant someone in his cell. Someone that he'll trust. Good idea, sir. Someone that no one in his right mind would believe was a policeman. <laughs> Very cunning. Well? <laughs> so, what are you lovely ladies in? In for? In prison for? Yeah. What did the filthy Melvin Pike get you in for? For me? <laughs> oh, uh, Speedy. <laughs> Speedy. In an aeroplane. Speeding in an aeroplane. I nicked this aeroplane and, you know, <laughs> just started going too fast in it. What about you, pretty boy? Who, me? Oh, you know, lots of different things. Such as? Oh, lots of major crimes. Shoplifting, arson, fighting with big blokes in betting shops. <laughs> Any, uh, GBH? GBH? Yeah, <laughs> you know, the old, the old GBH, yeah. Great big hold ups. Grievous <laughs> bodily harm. And that. So, what are you in for then, Macca? Walking on the grass. I put you in here for walking on the grass. Yeah. Thompson, I think his name was. <laughs> and I maimed a couple of coppers. See, there's one thing I can't stand. It's coppers. I can smell them. <laughs> So, uh, tell me, Jack, why do they call you Scarface? <laughs> I like him when the lights a joke. <laughs> you get nicknames? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hundreds of them. Some people call me the killer, and others just call me Mad Bastard. <laughs> At school, they used to call me Spunky. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> to the loo. Pop to the loo? Yeah, must be all that tea I had at the station before I came. <laughs> Railway station. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. I wish to go to the loo. Uh, if you're looking for the Kazi, son, you're standing on it. <laughs> you mean? Yeah, unless you want to hold it until recreation time. When's recreation time? Uh, 23 hours, 24 minutes. 23 hours? That's barbaric. That's criminal. I mean, what about, you know, like... Number twos? <laughs> All within the bucket. Number ones, number twos, number threes. <laughs> I can't believe this. Nothing you can do about it. Well, soon see about that, eh, Dave? Oi, screw! We want a proper lavatory in here, all right? 
We're not animals, you know. We want a proper bomb. Hey, screw! Give us a loo! <laughs> number one! And number two! <laughs> I did a couple of appearances for American TV recently. Uh, it was a satellite link up uh, from London for the Dick Clark show in America on a Sunday night. And his partner was a guy called Ed McMahon, and they present the show together. Now, 25 million people watch this show, you know, so I'm just like a little bit on edge, you know, and want to get it right. So it's, you know, it's Dick Clark, Ed McMahon, right? Dick Clark, Ed McMahon. So Dick Clark comes on and he says, Right, now, ladies and gentlemen, over live to London as we say hi to Jasper Carrot. And I say, Hi, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the silence across the Atlantic. <laughs> so the programme continued and all went well until this American comedian came on and started doing jokes about our royal family. Whether it was for my benefit or not, I don't know. And, uh, and I sort of what, what, what? And uh, jokes like, you know, hey, that Duke of Edinburgh, what a guy. When he's not shooting grouse and pheasants, he's president of the World Wildlife Fund. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, how does Captain Mark Phillips count to four? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was quite funny, actually. <laughs> And I thought, hang on, hang on, who do you think you are, pal? So when it came to my turn, I thought, what, well, two can play at that game. So uh, I said, hey, Dick, how does Dan Quayle count to six? One, two, three, four, five. Is this a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Dick came with those four slots. <laughs> well, I was into it then, you know, and then I went on to talk about Anglo-American cultural exchange, and I said, isn't it wonderful, eh? You've sent us Frank Sinatra, Meryl Streep, Bruce Springsteen, and we've taken them to our hearts. We've sent you John Lennon, and you shot him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jasper Coat. I'm sure we'll be seeing you again real soon. <laughs> Bye, dickhead. <laughs> oh, and Britain sends its love to ex-president Reagan and her husband, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let them get away with it, can you? If you're going to put your foot in it, go up to the groin. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I did it earlier in the year. Well, almost as bad in Birmingham and uh, in May I attended a, a charity concert at a Birmingham hotel for the charity Turning Point and the night featured Nigel Kennedy doing an hour of Vivaldi's Four Seasons in the presence of uh, Royal Highness the Princess of Wales followed by a four course meal and, and I've got to sing for my supper in a way by drawing the raffle uh, sometime during the night and saying a few words uh, but I do get the pleasure of being introduced to a Royal Highness you see before the show so I'm in the VIP reception room and all tugged up there with about 50 other people. I'm wearing a dicky bow and me, uh, me dinner jacket. I think I've got a fabulous dinner jacket. It's got dinner all down the front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to cover it up, you see. And the princess uh, comes into the room and like, um, she came over and uh, I could feel my mouth going dry and she, uh, she said, um, Hi, Jasper, how are you? And I curtsied. <laughs> She was talking to me and I couldn't quite, you know, my, my brain wasn't working and I thought, say something, say something. So I said, I've got two sheds in my garden now. You know. <laughs> she said, uh, you've got something on your jacket. I said, oh, oh yes, it's Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> she said, don't you like Yorkshire pudding? I said, oh, I love Fergie. <laughs> She ignored that, thank God. So we go into the room, and I'm on the top table with uh, the princess and all these other big wigs. And, uh, and the concert is about to start. And, and the tickets for this do were about 100 quid a head, you know. And there's all sorts of people in the room. There's car salesmen and market traders. And... <laughs> it's not exactly a classical music buff night, you know what I mean? I heard one of them say, yeah, well, I've got all the Four Seasons record, but who's this Vivaldi geezer? <laughs> And then it's time for the meal and I'm looking at the table and uh, there's all this cutlery on the table, loads of it. God knows what you use it for, you know. And I'm trying to figure it out and people keep tapping on the shoulder and go, hey, cut it, cut it. What do we use all this stuff for? I don't know, I don't know. I, I, um, look, look, I'll see what the princess uses, right, and, and I'll pick up the same and then you copy me. Hey, great idea. All right, all right. <laughs> so the first course comes and it's soup. It's this consomme stuff. God, I mean, everybody's looking at it a bit suspicious. It's like weak bobra with mouse droppings in it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, carrot! What do we eat this with? I don't know, I don't know. I said, hang on, I'll have a look, I'll have a look. I said, I'll have a look. And the princess had picked up a fork. <laughs> I picked up a fork. It's a fork. A fork? That's what she's got. Oh, all right, it's all right. So, I mean, it's a fork, it's a fork, it's a fork, it's a fork. <laughs> Everybody's got this fork. And they start eating the soup with the fork. <laughs> and I look at the princess, and she's been showing this fork to somebody, puts it down, picks up a spoon, and starts eating the soup. <laughs> but it's too late. Everybody in the room is eating soup with a fork. <laughs> and the princess, God bless her, thinks, blimey, everybody in Birmingham eats soup with a fork. <laughs> and starts eating the soup with a fork. <laughs> well, the first course lasted about two and a half hours. <laughs> come towards the end of the meal and I've got to draw the raffle and I was told at the outset when, that when I did this the princess wouldn't be there you know she'd be long gone however this is not the case I mean she's having a great time and she's dying to see what brummies are going to eat spotted dick with <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sort of you know oh, I'm just a bit there and, and uh, the raffle prize is a holiday anywhere you like from the Intersun travel brochure 
Uh, and I've got a couple of funny lines leading up to introducing, you know, things like, you can have two weeks over land to Iran in a penguin books lorry. <laughs> <laughs> or a skiing holiday with Fergie. <laughs> Plenty of dates to choose from. <laughs> So I managed to cut that out, so I went straight to the end, and, uh, and I was panicking, and, uh, and I actually came in with, well, hopefully Her Royal Highness has enjoyed herself tonight. Uh, we're sorry Prince Charles can't be with us, but I'm sure when she relates what a great time she's had here, he'll be all ears. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, madam. That will go date the post. Uh, no, that means we leave it down here and it takes us a day to post it. <laughs> you want to renew your car licence disc? Yeah, yes, yes, it is a terrible price. Look, sir. No, look, there is no quicker way of getting it there. No, I assure you. No, there is no air mail to none eaten. <laughs> you want six months or a year? Uh, one UK visitor's passport, is it? Oh, hang on. No, it's a Morris Marina. I would have thought a year was a bit optimistic. <laughs> uh, we don't do them weekly, I'm afraid. Here, got your photos. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, oh dear, look at him. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. Well, which one do you want? The one with your eyes shut or the one with your mate leaning in behind you making little rabbit ears with his hands? <laughs> oh, oh, they are your ears. <laughs> right, and this is fragile. <laughs> Bloody wasps. <laughs> uh, oh, the queue's building up a bit. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Always wanted to work in a post office, you know. I had a stamp collection when I was a kid. Yeah, what'd you have? I had uh, four first class and two second class. Yeah? Do you have any of an album? Well, they were already in a little red one when they came out of the stamp machine. Ah, right. <laughs> the last time it was working, I think. Yeah, yeah, mm. very probably. Oh, look at these. Nice to know that the telephone can never replace the letter. No, 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 no. You have to write to telecom to complain about your bill. There you go. Well, you can be that much more intimate in a letter, can't you, eh? Yeah. Yeah, say those things you dare not say on the telephone in case someone's listening. Yeah. Be a little bit more raunchy. Oh, uh, put the kettle on, will you? Do you want a cup of tea? No, I want to steam this open. Oh. <laughs> Love letter, is it? Oh, well, you can always tell, you see, by the abbreviations on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swalk, sealed with a loving kiss. Yeah. Norwich, knickers off ready when I'll come home. Yeah. <laughs> Darling, very loving cuddles. Now, that's a car licence reminder. <laughs> oh, 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 bubble wrap, my favourite. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, this brings back some memories. Did you have acne? <laughs> all right, all right. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. You may well wonder why we have 18 service windows and only two of them are ever open. It's because we like to give you something to think about while you're queuing. This week, we're going behind the scenes at your local garage to examine the nuts and bolts of becoming a successful motor mechanic. <laughs> Always remember that when you take in a vehicle for service or repair, you're accepting responsibility for the owner's pride and joy, and he'll expect you to lavish care and attention on his car. <laughs> Before a major service, it's a good idea to ensure the car is clean. Now, have you remembered to retract the aerial? And ensure all the windows are fully closed? And you're absolutely certain that the car is correctly positioned between the white safety lines.
When carrying out a full service, it's important not to overlook those minor but important details like tire pressures. When you reach the manufacturer's recommended pressure, move on to check the other tires. To give the car a really thorough inspection, you must examine the chassis. And this is where the hydraulic lift really comes into its own. Now, don't forget, you have to check the oil pressure, brake fluid, solenoid and starter mechanism, gearbox, clutch, electrics, compression, steering, exhaust system, fuel injection, rack and pinion, differentials, heating and air conditioning, tracking, oil filter, plugs and points, rockers, tappets, camshaft, and cigar lighter. With all the mechanical repairs completed, it's simply a question of giving the car a final polish. <laughs> and the delighted customer will once again be the proud possessor of a vehicle in showroom condition. And as a finishing touch, we might like to suggest that the owner takes you out for an inspection test drive. If the job's well done, you might even get a surprise token of thanks from the satisfied customer. to do it series when we show you how to go square dancing. <laughs>that's almost the end of the show uh, we'll be back next week uh, where we'll be featuring uh, a documentary on the man from the Nescafe advert and asking him why if he's so smooth rich and handsome it's taken him four years to get his leg over <laughs> And we'll be surprising the production team at That's Life by sending them a penis that looks like a turnip. 